Uh, proxy table gaming fans, you're joined tonight by the Gobbo for the Goblins Grotto Hobby Show. So you have myself, the Gobbo. We're joined by Scabfat. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Good. I'm good. Have you had a good New Year? Uh, I have. Yeah, we made it, didn't we? Uh, the world <laughs> didn't implode on itself. We managed to drum up enough sacrifices to the old gods. Exactly. To allow us to have another year exactly and talking of old gods we've got someone to introduce we've got marmaduke hello marmaduke hello hello internet my name is marmaduke how are you we are we are well <laughs> there's more than just me and dan here but... as spokesmen for the internet we are we are well exactly ah, excellent are you excited to get started uh, I am. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for uh, welcoming me into your your very welcoming bosom. You're most welcome. It is plump and slightly moist. Oh dear. I don't really know where to go from that. And uh, <laughs> I, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I ran quite a few scenarios in my head about how uh -huh. I was going to do my own introduction, and uh, uh -huh. I never ran this one. So no. uh, yeah. I apologise to you. Just, to you just got a yes and me. Yeah, you just got a yes and me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you to all our listeners for uh, listening. And um, yeah, we look forward, and I look forward to uh, to getting acquainted over exactly. the many weeks uh, for the rest of the year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So today we are doing March to the Beat, and news is the first draft of history. Okay, so next up we have a little company called Flea Market that was just started doing 3D printed bits for the Ninth Age. So specifically, oh. objective dice that are 3D printable. <laughs> so rather than having to roll D6s, you can actually just roll that and read it and it's done. I think it's a really clever little idea and it's something again just to, to speed up the, the game rather than having to keep referencing, rather than having to keep referencing back to Pet like Andy said. Back to page 96, carry the two, etc. <laughs> so loads of different ideas. So you can do it for the secondary as well. Oh, I guess that's is that break break is that break breakthrough? Yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. Breakthrough. Breakthrough, King of the oh, Hill. It's King of the Hill. <laughs> oh, yeah. right. I get yeah, yeah, okay. That's cool. That's cute, actually. That's very cool. Very clever. Like very that. clever. So again, it's just literally just a way of speeding up and streamlining that game. Um, they also do um Race specific to T nine A as well. So War of the Dark God dice, for example. Ooh. Very cool. Okay. Not too sure about dice cups, but um, I'm I, as a blood bowler, I'm quite anti dice cups. But they are very cool designs. Yeah, they definitely, be. definitely. There's also orcs. Oh, that's wicked. That's really cool, actually. So you've also got your line of sight markers. So again, race specific, which is quite cool. Yeah, that's and great. The chaos. Cosmos, yeah, top coin, exactly. Oh yeah, I just you know what I was directly in the line of sight. I didn't even notice that. That <laughs> is very cool. So they've got all the races on there, and I think it's something. That, but on the supporting companies thread, on the have a look, check them out. Really, really good stuff. Next up, Torek Wargame accessories, which are from France. So I really, really like uh, rubber-backed six-foot by four-foot gaming mats. Mm -hmm. I think it's something that neatens up the table, easy to move your models about on. So Torek have done printed Ninth Age deployment area scenario maps now. Ooh. So it already has all the deployment zones that you ever need for the main rulebook. It has everything pre-marked out, which is nice. You can choose any of the maps that they have available, which are really cool. And then you can then have those deployment lines printed on as well, which just really, again, it speeds up the game, it speeds up the process. You don't have to do your line of dice there. You know that that's going to be the right line, for example. You can get them double-sided or single-sided, and it works out about 56 quid for a single side or 90 quid for a double side which is not too shabby, considering the normal rubber back mats are £60-ish. I was going to mm. say, yeah, it's a little bit cheaper than 
uh, than other suppliers. So this is six foot by four foot, and then it's also got the, the ninth age. In... So really, really good. So www.torek.fr/en-gb. Okay, guys, and now on to Bad Moon Rising Two. And to come and explain about Bad Moon Rising Two, we have Mr. Rory Stoves. Welcome. Okay. Guys, thanks for having me on. You're more than welcome. Hello. Okay. Well, if you'd like to talk to us about Bad Moon Rising Two, Rory. Yeah. So, uh, Bad Moon Rising Two, uh, actually the second three thousand point tournament that I uh, ran, I've run this year. I ran the first one. I think it was in June. Was it June, Andy? You came to that, didn't you? Yes. Uh, yeah. It was I feel June, like it yeah. was. Yeah. I feel like it was in June, uh, and then we just, you know came back after the summer and everyone's like, when's the next tournament going to be? And I was like, all right, we'll just we'll run a second one. Um, and so the key, I suppose the key elements of it is uh, 3,000 points, which is obviously very different to other tournaments that run around the country. Mm-hmm. One day, three games. Um, to be honest with you, the 3,000 points is kind of linked to the fact that the amount of time I can get at the, at the venue um, if we could have more time, I would probably make it more points. But actually, I quite enjoy it being 3,000 points. Um, and it was an event that largely ran for club members. Um, we've got quite a good group in London. Um, we had managed to get 18 players. I think it was London and the Reading, uh, the Spiky Club group in nice. Reading, um, who a couple of them are in both chats. Um, What's the London group called again? Sorry. Uh, so the London group is the LWG, the London Wargaming Guild. Yeah. Um, which people will see across multiple different um, sort of like hobbies, right? From that huge 40k presence, really, really yeah. big Blood Bowl presence. But then, yeah. like, name a type of um, game, whether it is Games Workshop linked or not, and there'll be someone from LWG at tournaments up and down the country. Nice. And awesome. then the Reading group are the Spiky Club. Spiky um, Club. And the Spiky nice. Club, yeah. And there's prob- uh, uh, probably about. I want to say there's probably about eight of them who live in and around Reading um, to get together for games. Uh, really nice bunch, you know. They um, they actually travel to various tournaments in the south, so that they'll have been to Art of War in the past, and I know they're going. Some of them are planning to go again next year. So awesome! Oh, really? Yeah. Good. Or, or or this year, in fact. So yeah, so we had 18 different people, and there was lots of different races, which is nice. I I kind of let everything go, you know. All the auxiliary books are a fair game. Giant book is fair game. Nice. Um, yeah, like just just more fun, right? Yeah. Um, and as as you can see up on the screen, we had a nice variety of races from our um, eighteen players. Um, what's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten different races. I suppose yeah. nine if you don't include Macar from the main books. Nine out of sixteen ain't bad. Um, Macar's not a race. <laughs> yeah, that kind of. Yeah. Is, it, but, is that was that was that Joe? <laughs> it, it was Joe. Yeah. It was, uh, uh, it's like it's the only time he gets to use them because they're not painted, right? So yeah. <laughs> he's, gonna get, he's gonna rely on you know uh, people who allow you to bring the unpainted models, which is I suppose another thing to say about uh, the tournaments I tend to run because I'm running them for uh, newer players who are coming into the hobby at the club, and we've actually had quite a few of those over the last uh, five or six months. I, I feel like people are getting ready for old world, maybe. Um, and so I just let people bring whatever models they've got. They don't, don't have any painting requirements. Um, it's all very fairly chill. Um, we got some pictures up on board. Yeah, this is David's beautiful KOE army. I think we'll, we'll see that yeah. uh, on the tournament scene shortly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then there's a couple of really nice, there's a really nice Orc and Goblin army, which um, Elliot's been putting together. Um, well, I'm yeah, hoping David then... brings his Asklanders to Art of War because I've grudged him. So oh, have you? I'd be a little bit worried. He, he might well bring his KOE. Well. I think I think he's now got four and a half thousand points of painted KOE. So yeah, I think, wow. he's, I think he's. I think he's. Cause he's. I think he's. Yeah, feeling the KOE now. Yeah. So um, I mean, you'll play a beautifully painted army anyway, right? You know. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. So it was. It was a really, really fun tournament. Um, like you say, there's lots of fun miniatures. I love these models, right? The, the superhero <laughs> ogres, so right? Cool. What's not to love? So cool. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, everyone always spots a new new superhero in there. So, um, definitely, you know, Chris Mace's ogres. I think, I think everyone mm. is in London played them at some point or other. Uh, and um, 
Yeah, we had some like very special scenarios, uh, not dissimilar to what uh, is going coming up at Art of War as well, which is mm-hmm. um, it's almost like we planned this. We definitely didn't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember talking to Dan about the scenarios for Art of War. And he was like, "Oh, I'm doing these," and I was like, "Oh, cool, yeah, I've, yeah. I've done some of those at my tournament." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Does that give uh, people who've been to the tournament a leg up, you know, if they know what they're talking about? Um, and I also stole a couple from uh, the Rob's uh, Welsh Championships. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Last year. yeah. I think he did like the I think he did the quadrant deployment, which I really liked. Uh, yeah. and so, so I stole that one from from him that as was, well. That was my game versus Tommy T was a quadrant one. Ah, yeah. I got Karna Sword. Oh, did you? <laughs> <laughs> um but I think doing the different scenarios and the different things like that, I think it's a really good idea and it's something to keep the game fresh for everyone. Yeah. I, mean, I think yeah. it also just promotes, like, if it can get the, the, the gamers kind of thinking about the game some more, um, yes. you know, that's a bit more exciting for, for them because all the hobbyists are turning out with pretty armies already, right? But yeah. Yeah. if the gamers <laughs> can turn out and also have to crunch some brain cells, that's that's good. Exactly. Do you, Rory, do you, did you, or have you found that certain scenarios lend themselves better to a 3,000 point army? I'm not sure. So, to be honest with you, Andy, I've kind of, I kind of just take push lists, right, for myself, because I just (laughs) want to basically get through my games as quickly as possible. um, And, uh, and hopefully um, I then have like, you know, half an hour at the end to make sure that everyone's games are getting sort of finished. So I'm trying to finish my games in about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. Um, (laughs) uh, So what I do think with 3000 points is because you have a lot more board space because I play on the same size table, right? So you've got a lot fewer units on a lot more board space, which is, which is quite interesting um, and makes it, I imagine if you did run full avoidance, you'd have a lot more room to do so, right? Yeah. Um, so that might be an issue. Oh, there's a couple of really good pictures up on screen at the minute. So first of all, I love, 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 love this giant on the left hand side. It's so um, good. Who's who's yeah. giant is that? Can you remember? Uh, I want to say that that was also Chris Maces. I think he's playing Ben Dunford in that game. Nice. Um, and then yeah. on the right, that's that's from game one. Um, <laughs> That's, Jack that's Hayward hard. and <laughs> Tom Hayward, man. Uh, Tom, I, I, just to give you the sort of the contrast in, in abilities, or not abilities, in experience, shall we say, right? Jack Payne, you know, multiple, sort of multiple tournament winner, you know, yeah. has been on Team England ETC, hasn't played, you know, realistically much in the last 10, 11 months. I don't think he played much in 2022 at all. Um, but he, uh, he came in for this tournament. I think he said it was his first on table game since he'd been at Masters earlier in sort of January of the year. Tom Hayward, I think ten games into the hobby. Yeah. Um and you know what the pairing gods are like. They put them up against each other game one and I saw was <laughs> walking by towards the end of the game, you know, having finished my game in about you know an hour and a half, hour and forty five minutes. And I see this and I'm like, I'm gonna have to take a picture. Um I suppose the, this um, is what happens. Warriors when... bounced, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think bounced through is probably more more a more accurate description. <laughs> yeah, there weren't there weren't many dwarves left uh, after the game. Uh, sorry, after that round of combat, um, these Kestrel knights. They're oh, just, guess, oh. They're yeah, brilliant. so That's brilliant guy from we had we even had international people coming over. So we had someone from Denmark who was flying over to see some friends who happened to be ninth ages. And who were involved in the tournament, and they got him a ticket. Nice. And his name was Thomas, and he's got these three. I think they're Mantic Draken riders. Um, he's got them as Kestrel knights, but because the original models come with sort of plate armor and you know very non Sylvan elf looking helmets, he's done a bit of a uh, chop shop job on them and um, replaced their heads, and then painted their what well, their plate armor, but painted it brown so it looks like leather armor instead. That's cool. Um, nice. Yeah, really, really cool. Uh, yeah, and there's uh, there's Joe's Macar. Uh, painted a tabletop standard, I do believe now. I think it's got three three colours on them and based, right? So, uh, Yay! Go, Joe! Yeah. Go for Is it. it. Are we completed? Uh, yeah. I think almost. I don't think it's completely there, but I think he's almost there. Um, I, I feel like one of his big mammoth-type things was still not fully painted. Um, mm. 
But he's getting close, right? You know, I think we could start mm. to see yeah, Joe uh, playing the Makara more tournaments. Good lad. Yeah, this spider, uh, Elliot. Ah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the googly eyes for me. It's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, and then I think, unsurprisingly, the people who finish at the top are all <laughs> really experienced players. So Jack Payne uh, won with three victories. Uh, Marson came second with with three victories, a couple of points behind, and then Mel, nice. um, who I think Mel played Jack game two and was very unhappy about it because two very good <laughs> players uh, uh, came in third. Uh, and then I gave a shout out to uh, Ben, who's been running Warriors for a long time, but went back to Orcs and Goblins um, mm. and uh, came in at fourth. Was Ben, was his Orcs and Goblins, sorry, his Warriors army, Orcs yes. and Goblins? Yes. yes. And he won Best Painted at something last year. I want to say it might have been the UK Team Championships. He was nominated um, again for um, Art of War as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really lovely army, right? Like, cracking thing. Very nice. But yeah, so he's been run he was running them as Orc and Goblins, and yeah, so I gave him a little shout-out. I always, always like giving a shout-out to fourth place, because you know, they're often well, they're often the bridesmaid, right? So, um, <laughs> but yeah, so, and I was saying, you know, I think the the beauty of uh, Badman's got this, like, wonderful venue. It's not a huge amount of tables. I think there's 12 6 by 4 tables. Um, down in sort of like South London, uh, lots of space, really high ceilings, like space around the table. So you've got like a space to put your models between you and the table next to you, space mm -hmm. for you to roll your dice, um, lips on all of the tables. So it's hard for dice to sort of fall off space yeah. underneath yeah. for you to put your bags and all of your, you know, your cases. Uh, yeah. So it's a, it's a cracking venue. Um, and at the front, there's like a, I mean, it's like a boardroom cafe, right? You know, sorry, board game cafe with all of the, you know, all what you'd expect with that. But they also then do things like cocktails and food and pints and coffee. And, you know, so you get a really nice, not just a, a sweaty bunch of six by fours, as mm. we all tend to be, but um, you get a nice wide range of. Um, you talk about the tables people. or the chess size? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, the, the key bit for the, the tournament is just getting new players off the new players and returning players. So I think I had at least three players who was their first ever tournament That's of nice. ninth age. Maybe four players, actually, who was their first ever tournament of ninth, player, ninth age. And then one person who played ninth age probably four or five years, let's say five years ago, I think, four or five years ago. Um, and then he hasn't played it since. Uh, and he came back and he had, he, I think he played one game of ninth age against me before, in the between times so or just before the tournament. And then he got his three games in. So Nice. Uh, yeah, like I say, Badman, if you're ever in London, guys, like you know, just pop on down and, and have a look. It's just a really nice place. It's the kind of place you can take your missus to have a, a nose around, get her a nice coffee, get yourself a you know a nice cookie, um, pick up some some bits and pieces, whether you want paint brushes, a new game or whatever it happens to be, or just sit down and play a board game. So um yeah, it's a it's a cracking little venue. Uh I think we're quite quite lucky to have it really. It all happens to be 20 minutes walk from my house, which is yeah, not the reason I, I bought the flat, but definitely a bonus. <laughs> Rory, if you would, what if, um, for anyone out there who might be thinking, oh, maybe I want to sort of like try and galvanize ninth age players around me, or maybe look to get some people who are talking about maybe getting into the hobby, what sort of advice, maybe sort of like three key bits of advice would you give them? to setting a mini tournament up like this, especially at a, a 3,000 point level? Yeah, uh, that's a really good question. Uh, so what would be the three bits of advice? I think first of all is you probably need to do a little bit of groundwork beforehand. So over the course of the summer, I was I played lots of people who hadn't been involved in these types of things before. So that I you'd start to gauge people's interest. So, you know, it's also just getting people used to playing games. So I held, I think, three beginners nights at our local club where I just put out a shout out, you know, you want to come and learn the game. And, and actually what happens is you end up getting lots of people wanting to play. And so then you get, you sort of, you know, you have multiple games and I sort of just hung out and, and talked to people. And I it, sometimes I got to, I played because we didn't have enough people or sometimes I, I didn't play and I just literally went around the tables and just made sure everyone was, you know, having the questions being answered so on and so forth so i think you need to put in the groundwork first of all just to sort yeah. of gauge mm -hmm. interest um i also think that it's really important just to let people just bring what they have so one of the mm. things that i always do when i run these tournaments is the painting requirement you know i'm 
I'm not interested in sort of shaming people from um, for not having painted models. I know, you know, I think there's for me there's always sort of three parts of the the hobby. There's one part is the hobby part, you know, so the, the modeling, the building, the painting, which m almost all of us love. Then there is the sort of the really competitive end, you know, going to the tournaments and you know, yeah. wrecking face or wanting to do well or whatever it happens to be. But I think there's a whole bunch of people that just enjoy playing the game. Yes. Um, and I think it's really important that I sometimes feel like they, they're not necessarily capable to do because it's, you know, it's all about the hobby or all about the competition. I will say that the, uh, the try hard exists both in the hobby end and in the competitive end. Um, mm. But a lot of people just aren't try hard. You know, they want to, you know, they, put, they might put some paint on the models or they just want to run around with sort of uh, gray models. And so I would say to people at, exactly. at my little tournaments, just come bring what you've got, see if you enjoy it. And the thing is, if they enjoy it and then they know they want to go to a tournament, what's the best way to encourage you to get onto that painting table and get all your models painted up? Exactly. Having a dead life tournament, right? Exactly, oh, yeah. Yes. We've, exactly. we've all done that, right? We've all done that painting at the last minute, you know? Don't. Don't. Please, no more. <laughs> no more. Hey, Ryan does it multiple times. Don't. <laughs> Ryan does it with two hands on two different armies for two different people at the same time, while his army is fully painted and sitting on the shelf looking at him and smiling, and he's just painting for other people. I think that's his... Uh, that's... No, I, yeah. I keep selling them and then deciding to go to a tournament a month later. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, well, thank you very much, um, Rory, for coming on and talking about Bad Moon. Um, I, you're yeah. going to stick around with us to, while we talk through a couple more topics. But no, thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed running it. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me on and let me just chat, really, right? You know, I yeah, really definitely. love the sound of my own voice. We love the sound of your voice as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, then, is Breakthrough, which you also went to as well, Roy. <laughs> I did, yeah. So Open Breakthrough Stockport. is Stockport, um, which is run by Mikey Newman. Is that right? Yep. Yes. So our, our little cameraman, Lucky Sixes, was there, and he took a photo of everything that moved over the weekend, which is good. So I've got just a couple of photos to, to cycle through. But again, something that I find really, really interesting is the amount of people that are really raising their game with their armies. Mm. Um, so, for example, this one here, this is Warren's 3D printed I, army. I was just going to say, yeah, this is mm. like Warren's... Um... SA, isn't it? Yeah, really, really good. And so he printed that during lockdown, um, which we featured it um, in one of the hobby shows um, over a year or so ago now. Um, but again, he he's just looks really, really nice. Looks really striking. And yeah, he played it's good that he's had the time. KOE there as well. I think so, which again is also That's another beautiful army, right? Also, beautiful army. Then you've got uh, Tony's Demons with the massive moor on the bottom left. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's great. Um, and then in the centre, I think that's Matt Pell. Yeah. There's Warriors. I'm not sure who it is on the right. Is that Mikey Newman's Undead? Looks VCE. VCE, yeah. Mm. Oh, not sure. If it's yours, to, uh, comment, down in the, yeah. comment down below. Exactly. So then that's Artem versus I'm not sure who with some demons. Can you recognize that crotch? If it's just, oh, this we, is your crotch, we can... comment below. I think that's that's a world famous crotch right there. There we go. And then you've got Craig versus um Pay Weapons Podcast. That's Matt, Matty P. Yeah, Matty P and his Empire Army, that's right. Yeah, really, really smart. Again, just so many bright colours and the armies is really good standard. Blue faced orcs. Oh, so that's a very pensive Mr. <laughs> Parry right there. Yeah. <laughs> it is, isn't exactly. it? Is my GGI going to survive against that night charge? <laughs> yeah. Where's his, uh, no reason it is. Oh. Jake and Bondi. These are happy war gamers. I like it. It's true. He didn't Thanks. take his frogs, though. He took dwarves. I think dwarves, though. And they are, they are, they are another beautifully painted army. This looks like top table nonsense, eh? <laughs> yeah, you can see the concentration going up and up as we scroll through the photos. Exactly. Apart from Josh, Josh just yeah. looks dumb. Why have you got a camera dumb in your hand, Tom? Shenanigans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't me, honest. And there we go. That is the end result for that one. And so, a massive eighty-three points from Tanker. Like third, third winner or something like that. 
Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he ran Cardiff as well, mm-hmm. didn't he? Yeah. Blimey. Blimey. First blimey, person blimey. in ninth age in the UK to end, this, to end the year with like 400 points, which is basically mean you've won four tournaments. Yeah. What's interesting here, though, is if you look at the all the top armies, and we know that Ali brought his Orcs and Goblins, yeah. Um, nine different races out of the top ten positions. That's good. Which yeah. is quite good, right? It's a quite nice spread. It shows that the armies are yeah. fairly well balanced, but quite like that. And our yeah. Tony's and Ed's demons, they're quite different, aren't they? They are, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they I mean from yeah, I think they are. I think from what I've seen of Ed's, I know they yeah, I think from what remember I've seen of the lists in the past that they, they play quite differently. And yeah. I yeah, and I think this is uh, this is a good thing. This is only going to be a good thing for the hobby when you have, as Roy says, you know, a nice spread of um, mm. different armies. Not just in a, a snapshot of like that's just one tournament, but when you know you cycle through the different tournaments we've had over the last six months. Um, and yeah, okay, it may be the same. It may be the same names in the top ten because you mm. know players are players and are, are excellent players but but it's not always the same people in podium positions and they're not yeah. always playing the same they're not always playing the same armies you know yeah. there are people who like you we know for example bondi and, and mike newman they sort of like switch between their different um uh different armies and mm-hmm. uh yeah it's great it's it's a good thing for the hobby when we we see different different um Races, um... What I like about this as well, and I think you should demand it for Art of War guys, is people putting their army into Tawny Keeper. Right? <laughs> mm. It just, mm. like, yeah, it's like just for something like this where you're coming at it, you know, months later and having a look at it, you can just yeah. see what different people are playing, and it's it's so easy to do, right? It, yeah, you don't even have to type it out; it's a drop down menu. <laughs> yeah. So, looking at this, I like the fact that Andy Catlow did the Ultimate Submarine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 and then Jack <laughs> and Luke Williams did the opposite. <laughs> so, but again, still to, to do three wins and still come eighth, not too shabby, I don't think. He got into ninth with two wins, right? This guy clearly believes in win big and lose small, right? Yeah, yeah, is either rotten I... stomping or is a or or is just sneaking a loss. Exactly. And if we if we take if we take sort of tanker sort of like because tank there's nine points difference between set first and second, so if we remove that for tanker for a second between second and eighth, you know yeah. that's only ten ten points between. So that's really close between you know between seven positions. <laughs> yeah. So well done yeah. to everybody there. That's that's a yeah, really exactly. closely fought um, top ten there. Mm-hmm. Tom, we've got some pictures of the actual armies with best painted, which is good. So we've got, first up, Mark Carroll, which is Krieg Schmidt from War Geordie's Wafter. If you check out his YouTube channel, guys. And these lovely boys. Brilliant. Really smart. I'm, I'm not normally a fan of paper banners, but I think it's something completely different on this one. I think it, it's, it helps that it it's so kind of visually striking. Yes. Um, and like I've always been fascinated with black and white color schemes, mm, yeah, because like to pull it off well is oh, it's difficult, really hard. difficult. <laughs> and, and yeah, the spot colors just yeah, help guide your eye around as well. Yeah, helps. absolutely, yeah, it's great. I don't like the fact that the spot color on that one is red, but <laughs> again, really neatly painted, everything's all looking really good. And that, um, is that a Doom Lord? Was that his exalted? Suspect it's a Doom Lord on that size base. Um. Well, I mean, I don't think it would be a Doom Lord. I mean, we're Doom Lords Herald, are right? pretty. I well, they're the pretty. Herald, yeah. They're not. They're pretty rubbish just on their own. <laughs> well, no. I mean, in an army, they have to be. They tend to have to sort of be put into a. Um, uh, true, forsworn true, unit, yeah. uh, forsworn into the you know with the bodyguard sort of aspect. Yeah. So yeah. it's probably going to be an exalted, isn't he? Yeah, yeah it's so that's a herald, right? It's fifty by fifty base. Yeah. So that's, is that Archaeon? Is that the new Archaeon model? Um, it is part of it. Yeah, I think it's part the top, it. top. Well, I think it's the top half, and then the bottom half is a 
Chaos Warrior. Chaos Warrior could be Chaos Warrior. Sigmarine. Jake Corteen with his lovely ID that used to be KOE, apparently. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, what's it called? The uh, uh, Camel Riders definitely used to be on the KOE side. Yeah. It's lovely. It's just a lovely theme, isn't it? Each tournament he goes to, there's something else that he's added or mm. that he's added a different unit. Remember the Art of War in February last year? Um, he put forward a goat as his um, <laughs> a, a judge. <laughs> yes, so it's open, wasn't it? The open competition. Yeah. It's really good. It's like, why would you have a goat? It's like, I have a goat. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, just really smart. And again, he's added more and more bits over time and it's following the same theme. Mm. And he's converted these little boys here. Yeah, they're great. They're really cool. Yeah, be anointed with the new ones this mm. this time. Yeah, really nice. Ali Parron with his blue faced orcs. I love them. They're <laughs> just really nice. I'm not normally a fan of orcs, but that army just looks brutal. Two GGIs, a big spider, and then lots of orcs. Mm. And everything's got blue heads. <laughs> so good. Yeah. And it works and again because we've got the grey on the the bases as well. It's quite plain basic, but it really pops off against the green and the the armor. Mm. Mm. I think well, it's. It's, it's, it's got one goblin there for you. <laughs> on the wolf, yeah. One yes. redeeming goblin. Just just uh, just, just, just to keep you two happy, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because he has one think... goblin in his army, he's minus one discipline, is he? <laughs> Um, I think it's I, I I just love the the charm of the older style metal models yes. that these feral units made up of. Yeah, it's just the cheekiness that's highlighted by the blue faces. Definitely, this is drawing your your eyes from a bit more. Really smart, Matt Pell with his warriors. Just I love his different choices of models that he uses. Combination of Miss, a combination of the new AOS models, combination of some of yeah. the old warriors. Just really mm. nice. And I've been on the receiving. Yeah, I've always end. liked his painting style as well, stuff like that. Uh, mixing sort of like the pinks and the purples, mm. yeah. which are really bright with sort of like more subdued sort of like um, wintry tones. Uh, mm. you know, I've, yeah, it's I've a always very really sort... liked that about his painting style. That's a really good point. It's a very sort of vibrant scheme, but with a very cool. Um, a very cool tone. Yeah, it's mm. very nice. Those, I love the big beastie at the back, the one on the right-hand side. Then, yeah, and then you got his saucer roll, and some of the original Chaos Warhounds on the left. Oh yeah, they're going to be the yeah sort of metal metal ones, aren't yeah. they? Oh, I just noticed that the the cavalry to the back there. You see the sorcerer yeah. on the, on the yeah right yeah side. with the hor yeah with the horns yes yeah, so is that the Nurgle Nurgle sorcerer oh of course or yeah. the Nurgle champion with the um, yeah. that was the mounted version with exactly. the uh, the the long the, the long rifle him. was it the scythe he's got the, the scythe yeah the scythe yeah that's the it bug. and then they did a did they do a uh, there was a oh, on foot version with a rifle yes or am I am I misremembering something? that was before yeah. this one yeah, yeah right was... okay yeah yeah. Proper rogue trader times. Great the, stuff. Yeah, really cool. The original Archeon model. Yes. Yeah. You can spot a good lead model from 20 paces. We can. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. And then we have the winner for the best painted at Breakthrough was Craig from Spotty Dog Wargaming with his beautiful SA, yeah, which you had the pleasure of playing, Roy, didn't you? I did, yeah. I played it round five. It's such like this scheme was so good. I complimented him, I think, multiple times on his army. I think I, <laughs> I complimented him because I voted for it for best painted. And then when I found out I was playing against him, I was like, "Oh, great! I've never met before." Uh, you know, now I can take army. his army off. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then once during the game as well. It's just you know, as I'm removing the models, you know. <laughs> yes, this skin unit is delightful. Take it off. <laughs> I think when you when you have good knowledge of uh, the color color wheel and mm. you know sort of like identifying that greens and purples complement each other, yes, it it just it, it you know it creates striking images like this. Um, it's also just the new the new SA book just I think allows for some great modeling because the champions come on bigger bases. 
Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, so if you yeah. see like, you know, the uh, Saurus uh, warrior champion or the Tegu, is it called a Tegu warrior champion now? Tegu, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like the big croc and then you've got one of the skink <laughs> champions is, you know, they come with a bigger base. So it gives you like this great opportunity to model something interesting and different. Definitely. Um, and yeah. the theme's just, you know, it's just dinosaurs, right? You know, so really smart. Yeah. Again, a mix yeah, of Mears miniatures, a mix of old GW, new GW. Really nice. I think, I think adding on to the idea of the champions, just for SA in particular, the the compound units, because you're getting to mix and match the different types of models. Yeah. Like other armies have to make do with unit fillers. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But yeah. like SA just innately get that kind of visual interest. Yeah, it's very nice. And that verticality that you like them. Yeah, everyone. love a bit of verticality. Brilliant. Well done, Craig. Good on you. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for Rory for joining us, um, for going through yes. these wonderful woo, woo, woo. Here. Um, have you enjoyed your little segment? Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. I uh delighted to be asked to come on and it's been an absolute joy to uh pop my cherry as well so um thank exactly. you very much and uh yes. if i don't see you beforehand i will see you at Art of War. yes see you soon buddy thank you ever so much rory great hearing from you cheerio folks see you later mr stoves Bye. okay guys thank you very much for joining us and um, please like share and subscribe on all of our different channels that we have for more content um, as you can tell, we're trying to spread out our wings and do a little bit more about Ninth Age news as well as hobby content. So it'd be really great to see you guys there. Um, as of all, speak to you again soon. Cheers, guys. Ta-ra. Bye-bye.